Hello and welcome to Industry Spotlight with Creative First. Our guest today is Akul Tripathi, producer, director, actor, and creative strategist. With over 20 years of experience in the business of content creation and management, he was the founder CEO of DocuBay. He directed the feature documentary titled Man Ki Baat Bharat Ki Baat for Network 18, which was based on the revolutionary radio program created and hosted by the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. He has written and curated content for popular television shows, including Secrets of Sinoli for Disney+, Plus, Regiment Diaries, Sun Rachna, Kaun Banega Karodpati, The Power of Ten, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, among others. His next documentary, produced and directed by him on the business of astrology, titled Destiny on Demand, will stream on DocuBay on 7 June this year. Previously, he was the head of content and programming for Epic Television Network's Private Limited. He has also served as a member of the Central Board of Film Certification and was jury member of the Asian Academy Creative Awards in the year 2021. Akul is an alumnus of the Bournemouth University, United Kingdom. Akul, welcome to this discussion. Thank you. Thank you for having me. With, ever, with over two decades of experience in the media industry, what initially drew you to the field of content creation and curation? Uh, it was something my parents were not doing. So it was very really tempting to do it. <laughs> uh, when we started off, content curation uh, wasn't really a thing. It wasn't a specific industry or a department where you would uh, do something like content creation per se. Uh, things were much wider. There was creative and there was production and that was largely it. Uh, non-fiction programming was just about starting. This is the early 2000s with uh, the dance reality shows and the quiz shows. And uh, somewhere, uh, the only thing that made sense to me after I came back uh, from UK was working on the quiz show. Maybe it was because of uh, uh, Amit Ji and Shah Rukh that I wanted to do it. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But that was what uh, uh, drew me towards that. I had a natural inclination towards uh, GK related things and uh, factual content always did interest me. And somewhere from there is where content creation as a field uh, started because you were doing questions and curating them for the uh, quiz show. And uh, as the industry grew, as non-fiction programming grew, uh, content by itself began to mean things separately from story and uh, screenplay and dialogue and all the other things, content as a concept for nonfiction uh, started emerging and evolving over there. Of course, with other lifestyle channels like NDTV Good Times and um, Z Cafe and all being there, uh, content development took on a whole new ball game. First in nonfiction and now obviously there's content uh, across all the spectrum and we see it as a concept, as a foundation to the storytelling that we do. And I think that's a great thing and a great uh, insight that we finally managed to crack. How has storytelling and, you know, content consumption evolved with the advent of digital platforms? <laughs> drastically, it is, uh, things have changed uh, drastically. I think uh, the most obvious thing that uh, we all know and uh, strive for, regrettably, is the shortening of attention span we we are trying to target audiences who have attention spans that are increasingly lesser and with increasing number of distractions uh, to go away from the content that we are uh, presenting to them uh, on a that, that that's on a very individual per person scale that this happens uh, we are also largely now feeding content through them things that come up to them digitally in feeds which they see either on their social media platforms or as ads and then we try to take them into our content from there which has resulted in significant decline in what was uh, viewing by appointment of people wanting to come and see something because they're interested in it and the first uh, first step was done over there because you already had them because they were interested now you are trying to sometimes clickbait them or basically present them with something that creates an interest for them to come there and then try to hold them over a series of uh, planned uh, continuity engagement enhancers which come every 30 seconds one minute two minutes depending on the kind of show that you're making so that you don't lose that uh, audience 
so the way of storytelling has had to evolve considerably stories are being told there's more story in every 30 minutes than there was before because you were used to people waiting and watching a tv series 30 minutes because they have started it or a movie because they have they have been in the theater or because that's only five movies that you can see on tv which one of them they are going to watch and once they start they will continue through it uh, all those things have uh, have changed the the distribution dynamics the technology and what it has enabled has changed human behavior uh, so drastically that it necessitates change in the way we tell our stories right how do you think strategies for engaging audiences have changed with time are there any constants that remain effective regardless of the medium a good story however you would define that remains the same um, what constitutes a good story though uh, has the definitions of it have expanded uh, there are multiple definitions of it because there's multiple audiences now uh we can't see india or television or ott as one uh, homogeneous entity and create content for them so the strategy for telling story what remains the same what holds people together is a good story but a story that is good for them a story that uh the, the basics remain the same i watch a story because of my interest because of my catharsis because of something that is relatable to me or something that i would really love to do but i am too human to do it um so those factors remain the same but uh, what the story is saying and how it is saying will depend upon where we are saying it and to whom we are saying it what is our primary uh, target audience base and it is pretty specific you gone are the days i think where you could say that my primary audience is between 18 and 25 and i will have a secondary audience that will be from 25 to 40 and some kids might also watch it no that doesn't happen there's 10 generations between that age groups now and uh, the more focused you are uh, the more likely it is also for others to watch it but definitely a core group would be engaged the audience for documentaries is a niche one what made you consider it and see it as a viable focus area when starting out docubay in 2019 uh yes documentaries is a niche there is uh, no doubt about it all of non non fiction content at one time was considered a niche factual non fiction is an even smaller niche uh, within that uh, however when we see the size of this market uh, in india even in india india itself is a huge market and if we were to what we had seen those days was about 20% of the population would engage in factual uh, non fiction viewing and i think that's a similar number that uh, had come across worldwide when we spoke with people from say discovery in the us or curiosity stream at that time and uh, all their research pointed to having about a 20% base of viewing audience who would watch or would be interested in watching uh, factual non fiction programming um, also there is a larger similarity in the group of people who would want to watch documentaries globally as compared to just within india um you would see them as demographically people who are uh, with the kind of content that was being made at that time the content of documentaries has evolved drastically over the last 4 5 years again but uh, with the kind of programming and what was considered as factual content you would see it for uh, people who uh, were looking for more knowledge based programming who were perhaps more educated or were looking at education as a serious thing and it was not something that you would watch only for entertainment um so that homogeneous set was somewhere similar around the globe uh, what also bound them together with uh, a bequest of uh, colonization was the english language and uh, there were there was a lot of content available in the market already ready made perhaps had had some viewing cycle in the western countries maybe in theater or would have come on tv or would have come on some platform for some time and uh, disappeared but there was a huge bank of this content available and there was no dedicated platform to be able to watch it at one place yes every platform had a small section on documentaries but there wasn't a platform that only catered to uh, documentaries and uh, we thought and as we can see now the niche was big enough to allow for such a platform uh, i i think the uh, best decision that uh, 
myself and uh, Adit uh, Pitti, who's the managing director of the company, made was to take it global right at the outset because that significantly increased our market uh, size as compared to what we would have had if we were only in uh, India. And um, I, I think that the support we got with all the investors on that to be able to do that was fantastic for Docubay to become uh, what it is uh, right now. We, I think it still remains the premier, if not the only uh, platform for documentaries globally. How do you think local cultural elements have influenced global media trends and vice versa? That is very interesting. Um, are we still global? Is it a global village? Are we local? Um, I think my uh, the way I, I have seen it is that we, we and I think I would speak for every country and the people in that country when I speak with friends and uh, family everywhere, remain entrenched in what is their culture of their upbringing. However, the exposure, largely through media, of uh, various things when they watch uh, on platforms uh, influences them. Uh, but it's almost like a fad. You watch a Turkish series, so there's something that influences you for a while, and then you watch a Korean one, and then there is something that happens again for a while. And then on social media, there is a moe moe moment, and then for 15 days, everything is moe moe. Um, so I think uh, audience behavior would have has evolved into, it's not giving up on what is their basic preferences and what they've been brought up with or what they see around them, but they're far more open to sampling things from other places, uh, viewing the similarities and making it a part of their life, things that they see as something that suits their overall persona or the place where they are being brought up. And, uh, and they're also ready to change that very quickly. So... Uh, so yeah, if this is happening globally, it's uh, really good. I think local is going back to being global in a more inclusive way. What are your views on the role of production and tax incentives in boosting content creation and empowering local industry? Uh, I think overall, the, the uh, initiative of the government, their uh, ambition to be to make the media industry production not be centric to any particular uh, zone of the country, any city of the country and spread out uh, is very good. Uh, it, it does like like we all know help local industry and everything. Um, it will boost uh, people's interest in watching uh, something at a new fresh location that may not have been explored uh, before. I think uh, for me what is the best part about this uh, initiative by uh, government bodies, what uh, opportunity it gives us as content creators is to be able uh, to peek into lives of areas where we have not earlier, to tell stories from places which we have we have not known about because we have never thought about it because we never thought that, okay, we will you know, go to Jharkhand and uh, shoot the story over there because uh, hey, going to Jharkhand is literally impossible and shooting a movie. So just the incentive uh, the government offers does help in wanting to go there. It helps your content and your story be uh, stand out from others in uh, that manner. And of course, it uh, allows for a wider range of storytelling somewhere, including other parts of the country into it. Uh, now, whether I, I think the onus is on us as storytellers to make it engaging enough for people to want to watch something from, let's say, a Meghalaya or uh, the Manipur uh, story, especially in the uh, fiction storytelling, as opposed to non-fiction, that, that already has a market. People will be interested in watching something from Manipur and Meghalaya. But to have uh, fiction stories and narratives set in these areas and have the majority of our, what is the Hindi-speaking area and what we see as our main audience basis, also want to watch those things. I think that is a challenge that is on us as uh, makers to be able to do. Um, yes, and decentralization of the industry, of uh, its practices, of the technology uh, will lower the barriers for entry for filmmakers from various other parts of the country to join into this uh, conversation of uh, filmmaking, making content uh, in a more professional manner. Uh, they're already making content on YouTube, and I think it's fantastic content that comes even there. 
um, but in a more professional manner, which is showcaseable to the world in that sense. Uh, yes, it's a, it, that is always a great initiative. However, having had some experience in doing this, uh, I also think that certain basic uh, teaching, certain basic understanding of how the industry works, how the medium works, the work ethic is something that uh, governments, bodies related to filmmaking should inculcate in the people wanting to work in these uh, fields in these various states uh, for a much smoother working process because anyone from Bombay knows that uh, we are pretty cutthroat when it comes to working. We do nothing 24 hours but work and time, how important time is, how important uh, it is to uh, be able to finish a schedule in the particular time that we have set it out for. Um, so I think that I, I, with some more push towards that, uh, it will be a fantastic success. Well said. With the massive increase in content availability, there's an ongoing debate about quality versus quantity. What's your view on this and how should content creators balance the two? Oh. I think there are two, uh, we, the entire onus of this should not come on content creators. It is, uh, it is a call which is a mixture between the business side of content and the creation side of content. The quantity is required by the business side of content. Uh, for, the, for there to be better quality, depending, each person, each creator would have their own optimal quantity that they can create without affecting the best quality that uh, they are able to provide. Uh, but both are going to have to take cognizance of each other because the way the distribution channels are set to work right now, both of those things are important. Uh, though in my experience, unfortunately, quantity seems to be winning the game over here. Uh, it is far more important towards sustenance and staying relevant in an environment where uh, there is a lot of uh, disturbance with a lot of new content pieces coming in regularly from thousands of content creators. And we're not just talking about OTTs, which may be fewer in number, but each content creator on a social media channel is an OTT. Uh, and that is, we are fighting for eyeballs with everybody. Let, let's not uh, mix words in that. So quantity is going to be important. Consistent quality is what will change the game. Because once you know that somebody will consistently give you good quality, when the new one comes on, they will be far more interested in spending their precious time towards it rather than experimenting with something new. It's what we do when we have something from our favorite filmmaker uh, that comes out. We will go make it a point to watch that show, that movie, uh, that series, uh, because we trust that what comes out over here will be something that we like. And I think a consistency of content is what creators will have to focus on uh, to maintain their base. It will take time, but that, that I think is the way to go forward. Looking, at, looking ahead, what do you predict will be the next big trend in media content creation and consumption? In the way things have been over the last half a decade, no prediction is pretty safe from two months from now. Uh, but I think uh, what we have witnessed over the last decade at least is a change in content viewing uh, preferences, content making practices, basis technology. And I think that is still going to continue being the driving force for it. Uh, even if it is experimental, so to speak, in a niche audience that grabs onto it, by the time the entire audience experiences that new experiment, uh, it is going to drive us further and further away from traditional safe ways of making uh, content. Uh, you know what started off as uh, innovation because cameras became more mobile and suddenly you could offer a various range and variety of shots as opposed to before. Uh, went forward to things with uh, chroma and VFX and keying out things and making someone stand anywhere else, anywhere that uh, you wanted to. And there's AI going, now. And there's going to, to AI now. Uh, though the story would remain 
sacrosanct as always it would always need to have a beginning a middle and an end as far as our lifetimes go um i do think that uh, virtual reality storytelling 360 degree immersive storytelling is something that will come up pretty suddenly and uh, be all pervasive through you around you and something that you will have to uh, sample the technology is still being uh, end out but um, i think recently there was a movie that um, sri r rahman had uh, directed produced which was a 360 degree experience in california which was pretty revolutionary in the way it was uh, done there are headsets which allow you to move 360 there's technology that makes you puts you in a seat and the seat moves like as per uh, where the director would like you to focus on in a 360 environment um uh, live storytelling in that may still have some uh, technical glitches and may take some time uh, to overcome maybe ai rendering the side of live tv live camera that you can't see uh, in real time that it will happen as as drastic as it sounds right now impossible as it sounds uh, but uh, yes I, i i think that kind of storytelling is going to be the next thing that we would want to watch we would want to experience i would definitely want to make yes. thank you so much akul great exchange of ideas thank you for sharing all your insights with us and uh, have a great day thank you so much thank you for having me at slack to spoken to thanks man <laughs>